when it comes to the climate crisis, people often think of oil and gas, the transportation industry, but they don't think about fashion. People don't think about petrochemicals and fossil fuels as a really key component of how our clothes are made today. I was shocked awake by how damaging the apparel industry is to the environment and how people are living as a result of that damage. And it really was that moment, that eye-opening moment where I was like, the decisions we're making when we're sitting and looking at a financial plan or choosing to buy this shade of red over this shade of red has such a knock-on effect. I had established such a feeling of pride for the level and scale at which I had operated in the industry. And in 2010, that didn't feel like pride anymore. It actually felt like I had contributed to a really big problem. It was kind of at that moment where I just felt like I need to think about this differently and I need to use what I know how to do, which is really drive customer engagement, build amazing products and experiences for the better good. When you start to understand the scale and the size of the retail industry, it's hard to not think about waste, both waste beginning a supply chain through the production. After those products are sold, where are they going? One of the big problems with our industry is 20 to 30 percent of all apparel produced never sells. So you're overproducing by sometimes 30 percent, 50 percent just to hit your original plant sales. So this is a, just a flaw of how the business model operates. What we are seeing is ultra fast fashion plans like the Shein that can move goods into the United States without even paying duty not paying the price for all the ecological harm as well as the human rights abuses with which these clothes come to us. If something costs five dollars as a top or a bottom, that is the price of exploitation. There's no way to make that sustainably. In the linear economy, which is the normal economy today, we take resources and we make an item, we make a widget, that widget becomes waste. There's nowhere for it to go. So we've built the first half of the economy from source to consumer to be used. But then after it's used, where does it go? And right now, the start of the circular economy has been resale. The end of the circular economy that really closes that back half of the loop is where you take the make take waste model and turn it into a closed loop system by building out reverse logistics to actually take that and put it back into use. And there are various ways to quote unquote recycle, which is an all encompassing term for just finding a second use. In some cases that is resale. In some cases that is breaking it down into rags or fibers that go into something else. If there is a community need that could use an item or reuse an item, or if an item could be resold, that's the best next step. I believe that we can build recycling infrastructure that still supports reuse and repair. True fiber to fiber textile recycling is actually relatively new in its kind of maturity. We're still not running a huge amount of product through that system and it can't absorb the various materials and contents that are in all the clothes that we wear. We don't have infrastructure built out for collection and sorting like we do in other types of post-consumer items like plastics or cans and bottles. So where does clothing come back? Who sorts it? How do we build out that infrastructure? So the first step is to really identify and get a foolproof way to mechanically sort, separate, and grade your apparel so you know what the fiber content is. Many of our fibers are blends and that mechanical recycling can't address all fibers or isn't the perfect solution to get the best quality outcome of fiber. We can fiber sort and feed that into fiber to fiber recycling. We're starting to incrementally change the way things are handled. It is very hard to change the way people think. The industry knows that we have really big problems to address, but there's a very slow pace to change and there's a very slow ramp up to getting these solutions commercialized at the scale and scope to make a meaningful difference in the industry. I think there's a huge opportunity for marketers to impact this area. From an activism, advocacy, and policy engagement standpoint, there's a lot that marketers can do to humanize the climate crisis, to really move people in a way that builds empathy. The sustainability message can feel overwhelming and like, well, whatever I do, I'm not going to make a big impact. We actually focus more on the pain point we're alleviating. We'll say things like, turn your trash into cash. It really starts to resonate in this like, oh, that, that's me. I can do that. What helps to enable consumer and post-consumer recycling? It's the value of some type. I think from just a marketing strategy, you have to make this very human. Our approach is, let's 
overperform on expectations from a consumer level. And then, oh, by the way, we're cutting impact to global air, water, soil, and trees. And the product's been designed to be fully recyclable. So don't forget to send it back to us because we're going to do it all over again. If we can't make it part of the experience and if the consumer doesn't have a positive read on that experience, we can't expect them to change behavior. I am an eternal optimist. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this work. There is this growing awareness. And I think this recognition that fashion should not be a disposable good. We're not going to educate 300 million people on the benefits of circular economy. So if we can get as many people as possible thinking, oh, I should recycle this instead of throw it out, it starts the conversation.